In chemistry and all of science, we spend a lot of time describing matter. And so in this lesson, we're learning about how we describe these properties of matter. Now there are two types of properties, physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties can be defined as the characteristics of a substance that can be observed without a chemical change or a chemical reaction. And so normally you can just look at something or, or, uh, or feel it or weigh it. That doesn't require a chemical reaction. So for example, we can talk about the temperature of something. That's a physical property. Or how something smells. Or its color. Or its weight. Or its melting point. And so those are properties that we can just observe. We can see. We can sense those without actually changing the identity of the substance. The other type of property is called a chemical property. And those are the characteristics of a substance that describe how, how well it's going to react chemically. So for example, how flammable something is. Uh, if we say that uh, uh, gasoline is very flammable, well that's telling us how well it's going to react. And so that's a chemical property. Or how reactive something is with oxygen. Or its reactivity with water or its toxicity, how it's going to react in the human body if you eat it or drink it. Is it toxic? Is it going to hurt you? That's also a chemical property. Or, I guess the opposite of that, the chemical stability. If something's able to uh, not react, that is a chemical property as well. So we have several examples of physical properties and chemical properties. In, in, in science and in chemistry, we're very interested in the changes that uh, take place in, in certain things, in objects. And so we're going to look at two different types of changes, physical changes and chemical changes. Now the first type, once again, is physical changes. And this is a change in the state or the appearance of a substance. And so for example, if you take this piece of uh, celery and you cut it up, well, uh, Cutting something is not really changing what it is. It's still celery. It's just in a smaller chunks, basically. And so we call that a physical change if you're just chopping up something. In this case, we're taking a piece of paper and tearing it up. Once again, that's a physical change. It's still paper. It still has the same color. It still has the same texture. It's, uh, it's just in smaller pieces now. So that's a physical change as well. Uh, heating something up or cooling it down, those are physical changes as well. You're not changing what the object is, you're just uh, changing how warm or how, how cool it is. Or in this case, the, the uh, melting of a piece of ice. Melting is also a physical change because the ice was water when it was ice and when it melts it's still water. So changing state is also just a physical change. On the other hand, we have chemical changes. And this is probably the heart and soul of chemistry, because chemical changes are chemical reactions. This is a change in the actual identity of a substance. We're actually rearranging the atoms and making a new substance. Maybe we're making a new compound, or we're making uh, uh, elements from a compound. So, for example, if you take charcoal and you burn it, well, that's a good example of a chemical change. It's not charcoal anymore. It's basically the products of the, the burning of charcoal. There's some carbon dioxide and water and probably some carbon compounds in there as well. When we have these nice chemical reactions we do in the laboratory where we see uh, colors changing and the gases being produced, those are good examples of chemical changes as well. If we have an explosion by dropping a piece of uh, potassium metal into water, we have this explosion here. That's a good example of a chemical change. Or something like this. Maybe we have an old school bus or just a piece of metal and over time it rusts. Rusting is a good example of chemical change of a chemical change as well. Now when there's a chemical change or a chemical reaction there are a few things you can look for to to know that there's a chemical change taking place. For example, if you see a change in color or a change in odor or a change in texture of an object those are good signs that a chemical reaction is taking place. I think uh, intuitively we kind of know that as well. For example, if you take a sandwich and you put it in the refrigerator and you leave it there for two weeks and you forget about it and you take it out of the fridge and now it's turned green, 
Its color has changed, and now it smells funny. You know that because of the change in color and the change in odor, that it's not really a sandwich anymore, and you probably shouldn't eat it. Also, if you see a large change in temperature. Now, uh, a change in temperature by itself may not be a sign of a chemical reaction, but accompanied by those other things, it is a good sign of a reaction. Also, if you see light given off, like we saw in a couple of those uh, reactions on the last slide, that's a good sign of a reaction. Or production of a gas, like uh, smoke or uh, bubbles, those are good signs of chemical reactions as well. So if you see several of these, that's what we're looking for in a chemical reaction. Now let's talk about some of the, the ways that we describe reactions. This is a sentence. Aluminum metal and iron 3 oxide combine to yield molten iron metal and aluminum oxide. And that's a sentence that describes a chemical reaction. That's called the thermite reaction, by the way. And it's a very uh, exothermic reaction. It gives, off, it gives off sparks. It gives off a lot of heat. It is definitely a chemical reaction. But to be honest, writing out that sentence kind of takes a while. So in, in chemistry, we use a shorthand. We use a series of symbols and letters and numbers that look like this. And this is a, is a chemical sentence that says the exact same thing as the word sentence up here. The AL re represents aluminum. And the S means that that aluminum is a solid. And the plus means that we're adding, or that's the and. And the Fe2O3 represents the iron 3 oxide. And S tells us that's a solid. This arrow means yields or produces. It tells us that there's some kind of a chemical reaction taking place. Fe is the symbol for iron. And the L tells us that that iron is in liquid form, so it's molten iron. And is, of, of course, our plus sign. Aluminum oxide is Al2O3, and that S tells us it's a solid. Now, these symbols might seem confusing at first, but over the course of your uh, chemistry class, we're going to be learning what these symbols mean and how to write symbols and, and chemical equations like this here in the future. One advantage that these chemical equations have is that they're the same in different languages. And so if you learn one language, English for example, and then go to another country like Germany or Spain or, or France, they will use these same symbols to discuss the same chemical reaction. Whereas the word sentence may not be understandable to someone who understands another language. In chemical reactions we have reactants and we have products. Reactants are like the ingredients. Those are the things that we start with in a chemical reaction. And the reactants are always written on the left side of the arrow. Products, that's what you're trying to make. And so that's the end result of your reaction. We always write products on the right side of the arrow. And we can perhaps uh, compare this to baking a cake. If you're going to bake a cake, you have reactants, ingredients, like flour and sugar and uh, cinnamon and milk and eggs and oil and whatever else you put into your, your cake. The product is the cake. And so we have reactants and products in every chemical reaction. Sometimes we add other symbols into our chemical equation. If you ever see an arrow that has a triangle over it, that means that we're adding heat to the reaction. That's what the triangle symbolizes. If you see an arrow that has a lightning bolt over it, like this, that means we have to add electricity to the reaction. And the uh, reaction takes place in what's called electrolysis. It's an electrolysis reaction. If you ever see an arrow that has a chemical symbol written over it, like, oh, let's just say PT for platinum, it's telling us that platinum, or whatever is written over the arrow, is acting as a catalyst. And a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without being consumed. We'll talk more about catalysts later in this course. Now in chemical reactions, there is an important scientific law that governs how uh, they take place, or, or actually states what's, what takes place, and it's the law of conservation of mass.
And this law states that matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So what that's telling us is if you start out with 100 grams of reactants, you're going to end up with 100 grams of products. That's the law of conservation of mass. We never destroy or create matter. Hopefully by this point, you feel fairly familiar with chemical and physical properties and also can understand the difference between chemical and physical changes. And you can hopefully also describe some of the features of chemical equations like the ones you see on this slide.